Hello YouTube and welcome on in to a Phantom Modern Horizons Draft League. My name is Mr. Metronome, aka Ben Warney, I guess the other way around. And we've got a video here on the Lords of Wounded channel. And reminder as we get going here, if you enjoy this content, please remember to like, subscribe, leave us a comment in the comment section. Any and all of that helps. So, taking a look at this pack, our rare is fine, not great from what I remember. Um, it's situational removal. This cunning evasion can get played in the ninja's deck, but not great. Scale up is a very good finisher, depending on what deck you end up in. White, as a general rule, is pretty bad in the set, and there are not a lot of commons that stand out here. So, Ikite is fine, can do a good job in the blue-red spells and enabling blue-black ninjas. Rhyme Tender is fine in Snow, Winter's Rest fine in Snow. Honestly, Snow Covered Forest might be the best common here, like that or Rhyme Tender or Ikite. I'm going to take Scale Up. I don't think this is a very good pack, so we will see what comes. All right. So taking a look at this pack, these lands are fine, not insane. Um, Sadistic Obsession, not great from what I remember. Ikite stands out. This Anurid is very good, especially in the red-green lands deck. Savage Swipe is a good removal spell. Having cheap interaction and a low curve is a must in this format from what I remember. Cross and Tusker can go get lands for you. I think I'm just going to take Savage Swipe here over the Wall of Blossoms and over the Anurid. Try to get some direction. Again, this is like a fairly weak pack, but that was one of the cool things about Modern Horizons was that a lot of the decks were just very synergistic and it was not a lot of raw power. You really had to draft and there's a ton of niche synergies in the format. I only got to draft this for about two or three weeks the first time around and I did not get super deep into it the way some people did because the next set rolled around for the podcast. So we're going to take Savage Swipe here. See what comes. There's another Savage Swipe that's pretty good. Giver of Runes is a strong rare. Green, white, really not where you want to be. From what I remember. Um, I mean, it, it can be fine, but certainly not ideal. Red White is Slivers. First Slivers Chosen is a good one. This is pretty expensive. The Changeling cards were important in the format to really help smooth out and blend some of the archetypes together. Tempered Sliver here, fine. Green, not really typically a big player in the Slivers game. There is some, there is some like niche Sliver Changeling synergy in every archetype though. Um, so like, for example, this compared with the black, uh, unblo there's a single black unblockable changeling. I'm just going to take another savage swipe here and see what comes. All right, frost wall is a good one. It turns on our savage swipes, gives us some incentive to draft snow. Oh, there's also a mob. Yikes. Mob is pretty strong. Um... Green Black was really grindy. They had like Rot Widow Spider or something as its gold uncommon, which was very good. Um, again, Wall of Blossom's fine, but nothing special in this format from what I remember. So I think this is between Frostwalla and Mob. There was a big discussion whether Mob or Defile was the top black common. I think people ended up settling on they wanted the first Mob over Defile, but once you knew you were black, Defile was better than Mob. Hmm. I think I'm going to take Frostwalla here and just stay green and see if we can dip our toe into snow. All right, so say this is, there is like a green black slivers thing that can go on here. So not seeing much blue at all. And it's not felt like ninjas has been open at all. So this is a sliver in a pinch can do you can do unearth shenanigans like i remember this guy being good in green black with changelings there's also the other green uncommon sliver that i don't think it would be unreasonable to expect to wheel bellowing elk there were a lot of cool combos with in the format um we're not doing anything with this right five mana no we are not so i think this is between dragscape sliver and bellowing elk I think I'm just gonna stay green for right now. This is not exciting until you have ways to combo with it, but 
I don't partic- ooh. What if we were changed that? Ooh, there's also Crypt Rats. Crypt Rats is absurd. Um, we're not heavy black yet, but we did get past the mob, and this Crypt Rats is going way too late here. Web Weaver Changeling is also a very good card. You don't gain the 5 life as often as you would think, but 5 mana, 3, 5 reach Changeling is just a good card in the format. This is pretty late for a snow-covered island, and Arkham's Astrolabe as well, so it's possible that snow is open. I don't know if we want to take the Astrolabe or take the snow island. I think I'm gonna pass the Crypt Rats here. I'm kind of leaning towards taking the Snow Island or the Astrolabe. I think I'm gonna take the Astrolabe and see what comes. All right, a second scale up. So this is probably the best white common and really goes well with scale up. So we're looking for things like Squirrel Nest now that we've got our second scale up. So green white is actually a very good home for scale up and gives that deck a lot of legs. So green white's thing is creature fall. So you can see here from answered prayers, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, this becomes a three, three creature with flying. Um, there's a snow mill deck running around as well. We could try to do something sweet and take this snow covered swamp here. I think I'm just gonna lock up my second scale up here. All right, nothing particularly exciting here. I think we're going to take a Segovian Angel over Silumgar Scavenger and maybe look to get into... I know I said green-white was terrible. I always end up falling into green-white in this format and swearing I'm never going to draft it again. But Segovian Angel is very good with scale-up and it's just like a good cheap enabler in general in the format. And I think like with this flashing back, I think we can assume some people will maybe not... And also, if possible, we could just have a, a light snow theme here. It's possible people will know that green-white was bad and that white will be open. Like, but like the number one thing I remember about this format was that you wanted to try to not be white. All right, this is all pretty medium here. Rhyme Tender is a nice pickup as another thing to turn on our Savage Swipes. We're going to take Excavating a Nurid here just as a fine card. I don't know why Magic Online is lagging like that. That's really awkward. Somehow, like, my zoom button is stuck. There we go. I think we got rid of it. All right, let's get a Nurid in here. All right, uh, this is... Whoa, that's super late for First Slivers Chosen. I think this is pretty bad. We don't have any Slivers, though. I guess I'll take this and hope to not play it. Similarly here. Secluded Step's a nice pickup if we do end up going green-white. Sure, Soul Strike technique. Answered Prayers also could be real. Like, the Segovian Angel Answered Prayers deck, like where you just try to get ahead, stay ahead, also not the worst. Fallen Shinobi is such an absurd card in this format. Okay. Um, we're pretty far away from Fallen Shinobi. We are green, though, and we could get the Harrow Druid and try to splash this card. It's less good here than it is in Cube, but it's still pretty absurd. Um, Ursus Rage is fine. Frostwalla is good with our two Savage Swipes, but pretty unexciting past that. Black Red was kind of like a Goblin's Sacrifice theme. It's all sort of coming back to me now. Um, Frostwalla in, I think. We could also take Recruit the Worthy. We want If, if we end up green-white, we want a copy of Recruit the Worthy, especially with Bellowing Elk, to be able to get it indestructible at instant speed. I think I'm just gonna stick to the plan here and take a Frost Walla and make whoever cut ninjas very happy. Ayula, Queen of the Bears. That's why we did all that cutting of green. So this is busted. We wanna hope to pick up some mother bears. Um, stinks to pass a Savage Swipe, but Ayula is very, very, very strong. Unfortunately, we still have no other bears, but assuming green is open and we cut green, we can assume we're gonna get some mother bears. 
other things in this pack this is one of the best black commons after the removal spells probably the third best black common i think and one of the best enablers for the ninja deck um this is not embarrassing if you need interaction early, but we're going to happily take Ayula. Force of Virtue. That is very strong. It's a good reason to be white and green white and going wide. Ruination Rider is fine in the red green lands deck. I think we're going to take Force of Virtue here and look to wheel one of these Recruit the Worthies. It has not felt like snow nonsense is particularly open. So yeah, I think Force of Virtue here, and we'll see what comes. Still not locked into anything. I mean, we're locked into green, but we could be any second color. We just haven't seen a lot of incentives to go another direction. Whoa. All right, so here's a gigantic snow payoff. This is one of the best reasons to be snow. This card is absurd. We do have like a light snow theme with the rhyme tender and the two frost wallas. Ayula's influence is also very good, especially in tandem with Ayula, him or herself. I don't know Ayula's gender here. Um. Between Conifer, Worm, and Influence, I think there's a pretty good chance we wheel Ayula's Influence. Ayula's also ridiculously good with Bellowing Elk. I think I'm going to take Conifer, Worm. I, 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 my Zoom is doing that thing again. I think I'm going to take... Ah, it's still happening. I think I'm going to take... Stop. Conifer, Worm, and see... Why is Magic Online doing this? It's really weird. Okay, we're going to take Conifer, Worm. Sorry about that. And now we happily take Frostwalla and... Ah! All right, there we go. We're going to happily take Frostwalla here, I think, as something that goes well with Conifer Worm. These go well with our Savage Swipes. And then we'll look to pick up some Snowlands. All right, this is interesting here between Savage, that's really tilting me. It's auto-zooming. Why is it doing that? Okay, so between Plains, Frostwall, Savage Swipe, and Twin Silk Spider, um, Twin Silk Spider is, goes well with the scale ups, but I'm not sure that's really what we want to do. I kind of want my first snow planes, but honestly, I could see just, nah, we need a snow planes. We need some snow lands, and it does feel like we're going to be green white. It might be a little aggressive. Ooh, Rocks Veteran's a good one. Vesper Lark is interesting. We don't have anything that combos very well with it, but it is a sweet card in the set from what I remember. Reprobation, not great. We do have a secluded step that we could already play, so I think we're less interested in this one. Rocks Veteran's a very strong white common, and we will take it here. All right, we're gonna snap up another Rocks Veteran, and this will probably lock us into green-white. Really wanna wheel Ayula's influence. And we'll see what comes from there. So we'll take a Snow Island. If I had been a little braver with snow, we might have gotten there. All right, we wheel to recruit the worthy. That's a nice pickup. We do want one of those in this deck. Trustworthy scout is whatever. All these cards are whatever. Second trustworthy scout is mildly interesting. This is also interesting as a dash card to go in tandem with Bellowing Elk to give this indestructible every turn. I think I want a treetop ambusher more than I want trustworthy scout. All right, none of these cards matter. We're hoping to not play the imposter we already have. All right, we didn't wield the Ayula's influence, which is pretty concerning. 
I mean, somebody else is going ham on green and enter the battlefield synergies. Maybe somebody just cut it. I really thought that might wheel. All right, apparently people don't think Vesper Lark is so sweet. Ooh, all right, we're getting bailed out here by sweet opens. Winds of Abandon is a bomb, and we're gonna snap it up here and be very happy about it. And hopefully Wheel of Snow-Covered Plains so that our Frost Wallows aren't three mana, two twos. Need to pick up some bears. Ooh, a second Conifer Worm is pretty gas, especially if we can wheel some of these Snow-Covered Plains. Wing Shards is also sweet in the format, but we will not be taking that here. Yeah, second Conifer Worm is big game. And the card is in fact actually large as well. Okay, this pack is not great. We could take another Segovian Angel. We could take a Croson Tusker to fetch up our snow-covered planes. I think that might be our best bet, which is a pretty sad state of affairs. The fact that we've not seen a single Spring Bloom Druid is also pretty concerning. All right, King of the Pride, interesting with the Changeling stuff. It is a two-powered thing with Savage Swipe but it's not great and we don't have cats. This card goes better in black, white, changeling. Um, I think I just want a second bellowing elk, question mark. Lesser, Lesser Masticore is actually pretty darn good. I think I'm gonna take that here and keep our curve low. We'd probably wheel this bellowing elk. This card's good in the format. Hmm, nothing particularly exciting in this pack. This is good if you are the sliver deck, but we are not. I think we're gonna lock up another savage swipe here. We're gonna be swiping very savagely. Crypt Rat, so, I mean, we read black being open in pack one and we could have moved in. This draft could have gone a lot of different ways. If I had been, if I had taken the mob into the Crypt Rats, I think we would have settled into green, black, quite nicely as it is. This is no good for us. I think we're gonna take another Segovian Angel here. I don't know if we're gonna run them both. Battle Screech, that makes it much more likely that we run both Segovian Angels. There's a lot of sweet stuff you can do with Altar of Dementia and Hogak nonsense in the format, but we are way far away from there. Yeah, Battle Screech should not be going this late. Great pickup for us. I think that makes it likely that we play like some of our mediocre white cards as well. Astral Drift. We are not doing any Astral Drift stuff, so this is a cycling build around. I think we just want a 2 mana 2-2 two -two here, as unexciting as it is. We just really want to make sure that we have white creatures on the board for Battle Screech. I think we'll take, oh no, we want this planes. Okay, so snow-covered planes. Green-white is the one archetype I said I didn't want to draft, and here we are. So snow-covered planes in. Second snow-covered planes in. So getting three snow-covered planes here for our frost wallows is helping the deck out considerably. Also powers up our conifer worms, so that is not nothing. All right, we're gonna take another Segovian Angel here, I think. And these Segovian Angels are pretty unexciting, but they really are, I think, gonna pull their weight with scale-ups. So we're gonna hope to like curb out, get ahead a little bit, and then cast a scale-up and win. I could see Answered Prayers making it in at this point. Honestly, I could see Vesper Lark making it in with the triple Segovian Angel now as just another flyer. We're gonna take Answered Prayers here over King of the Pride. 
Honestly, our deck just got a lot more white, which is odd. Take another Recruit the Worthy. I doubt we will play it. Maybe. We only have the one Bellowing Elk, but we do want to go wide. And we do want to make sure that we have tokens for Battle Screech. Okay, we got some serious cuts to make here. I think this other Answered Prayers is a consideration. I don't love them though, honestly. And we have another Recruit the Worthy we could consider here. So, I like Bellowing Elk. I don't love this Anurid. Cross and Tusker I don't love, but it does find a snow-covered plains for our Frost Wallas. So I think just for that reason, it probably pulls its weight. A Eula we got literal no other bears for. How is that possible? So a Eula is just literally a two mana two two, but I think we're gonna play it because of this triple savage swipe. So apparently green was not what we were supposed to be doing. And the person that was passing to us just didn't value savage swipe as much as I do. Hmm. Cuts, 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 cuts. Force of Virtue's good with the triple Segovian Angel. I think these answered prayers do not quite cut it. So I'm gonna move them to the sideboard if I can get the program to stop zooming. Okay, this is where we ended up on the build. Magic Online was being a turd there as far as like keeping me stuck on zoom. So I just went ahead and built um, some of the last cuts were Bellowing Elk, um, really, and Recruit the Worthy. That was it. So Elk has the synergy just in Greenfall, Green White in general, in the Creature Fall deck in general. But I think we're more on the like get in, curve out early, get in some chip damage, cast scale up, and or kill our opponent with a large undealable with Conifer Worm. And I was thinking about cutting Enduring Sliver, but ultimately I decided I wanted to max out on my best white creatures for Battle Screech because flashing back Battle Screech is such big game. So we're going to take a snip of the deck here and hop in the rounds and see how we do. All right, here we are for round one. We won the die roll and unfortunately have an unkeepable hand here with white lands and green cards. So we will ship that back. This is much better. So we've got Segovian Angels, we've got Scale Up. Let's see if it comes together the way we drew it up. We will keep this. Bottom a Plains, I guess. Don't love that, but I think it's the thing to do. And let's kick it off with a Segovian Angel. Ooh, opponent went to five. That's a yikes. All right, so maybe our Segovian Angels will just go the distance here. So I'm not talking much because there are magic online sounds in my ear. I thought I had all that stuff turned off. I don't know if those are alerts there. I now have all of the sound in magic online all the way off. So let's see if that fixed it. <laughs> you guys can't hear it on your end because I have it muted in the recording, but it was in my ear and it was driving me insane. All right. Seems to have fixed it. Smash. Oh, they, I didn't see that. So they suspended a crashing footfall. So this makes two four four rhinos when it comes off of suspend. Putrid goblin, sure. So honestly, hitting a more couple, couple more land drops. I think we are gonna cycle the secluded step though to try to find action in the meantime. All right, there we go. So let's play land. Smash in with the angels, and we might just be doing angel damage and then scale up and then winning. That would be an okay way to draw it up for me. 
So assuming we hit our next land drop, this will be game if our opponent doesn't find a reach creature or a removal spell. No blocks. Winding way. Top four. I remember this card being good. Creature, creature land, yeah. Okay, so trumpeting herd went to the graveyard. This was a top. We, we yeah. This was a top green common. We didn't see this. We didn't see the other thing. Wow. Force of virtue is serious game here. So we just cast this now, despite the fact that it has flash, so that we can. Savage swipe one of these goblins after these have two power. We will get in for six. Opponent gets their persist trigger. But we continue beating down. Segovian Angel go in the distance. So land is great for us. Presumably lethal, unless our opponent does something extreme. And even then, we've gotten in enough damage that one angel is almost lethal with scale up. Luckily, we're going to be getting them dead before Crashing Footballs comes off suspend. Hopefully that is. No blocks. Bring them to it. So that's the card I was referencing earlier. We didn't see a lot of the top green commons. We didn't see Trumpeting Herb, we didn't see Spring Moon Druid, we didn't see the Mother Bears. So somebody must have been green and I just must not have. Ooh, this could be Mob. No, they don't have enough untapped stuff, so I think we just win here. So let's overload. Smash our opponent. Couple seven five flying vigilance. Game. Alright, we gotta win under our belt. So like, if you put Segovian range, so if you put Segovian Angel and Scale Up on a grading scale, neither card would get a great grade. I don't think like on the on the LR grading scale, for example. That's the great thing about this format is it's so synergy driven, and you really do have to draft a deck and not a pile of cards. Like that is ultimately true in this format, and there's so many different decks and there's so many synergies to get into. We essentially have no sideboard because we don't have a lot of interactive cards, so I think we're just going to be shipping it back an awful lot. All right, we are back here for game two of round one. This is another unkeepable hand, I think. We're on the draw. It's close. We have nine white sources, but I just don't think this hand does enough. We're going to mulligan. All right, this we will keep and bottom of planes. Dunzo. So Conifer Worm is already a big threat in this hand, and we have the best card of our deck in Winds of Abandon, which we, we really got bailed out by opening Winds of Abandon. Let's see, go. Another winding way, so they named creature and hit nothing. Wow, that's a savage brick. Okay. We don't have any double green spells in the deck, right? No, so I think we just run out another snow covered plains here and poke in with Segovian Angel. So Conifer Worm threatening to be a 7-7 seven, seven trample with threat of activation once it comes down with the two snow covered plains. Ooh, okay. Wart Eye Witch is a fine one. Savage Swipe dead at the moment. So we'll continue poking with the Segovian Angel and hoping to draw some action before Conifer Worm. Like, finding a relevant card to play here would be really nice. No blocks. 
Trumpeting her? That's scary. So that's going to come back next turn, and we bricked on finding action. So I think what's probably going to end up happening is that we will play Conifer Worm, chump with Segovian Angel, and then overload Winds of Abandon, and hopefully Wrath our opponent's board, because they will get a free Elephant here. This is absurd. So you get the other 3-3 three, three for free here, and then you also get to play a spell. Trumpeting her is such a tempo swing. So we're going to be taking 6 down to 11. No blocks. Rot Widow Packs. So they have nothing in their graveyard yet to exile. That card is very oppressive, though, and has reach, so we are not going to attack into that. So maybe Conifer Worm stabilizes us here. You're late. So if we weren't planning to overload Winds of Abandon, I think I would Frostwalla. What are they attacking me with? They're attacking me with Exact Lethal if they have a removal spell for Conifer Worm. Still think it's worth the risk to play Conifer Worm here. Worst case scenario, we chump with Segovian Angel and then have a Frostwalla to follow up with. And this might just stop them from attacking. I doubt it. They, they probably are supposed to push, even if they don't have a removal spell. So let's hope we're stable and that Bryant Elliot doesn't have any action here. Best thing for us is no attacks. We overload Winds of Abandon. If they attack, we will block with the Conifer Worm. I think we're supposed to block here. There's too many cards that kill us. There's plus two, plus two from a couple black and green cards. So let's block here. I think presumably hoping to trade if they do have plus two, plus two still. So let's say, okay. Our conifer worm lives here, perfect. They also might just be hoping to drain me out with Rot Widow Pack. That's not great for the home team, because now they get it. Oh, no, we exile. <laughs> Never mind, that is great for the home team. Get wrecked, and they can't make a spider in response. All right, this is just going to be game here. I feel sorry for the opponent. All right, and I think we probably have our first win under our belt with that. They have one card in hand, and we've got Savage Swipe as a removal spell and a Conifer Worm that is a big boy. Normally, I would be worried about dying to like a random treetop ambusher or something, but Segovian Angel has Vigilance, so we don't need to play around that. Putrid Goblin, sure. All right, so let's cycle the Secluded Step here and see what we hit. Actually, do I even want to do that? I kind of want to just play Frostwalla and pump the Conifer Worm. I think that's better. Just to get another Snow Permanent down. And then our opponent is dead in two swings. Plus four, plus four. Don't mind if I do. All right, we got our first Modern Horizons win under our belt. So we're few and far between for me in this format. I really struggled. I think finally at the end of it, I understood the format better, and it was coming back to me a lot during that draft. But there, if you don't know what you're doing or you're picking the wrong cards, this format is really punishing if you don't build your decks right. And there was a point where I just thought, like, you had to be ninjas, and you really just don't. Like, all of the decks are good. You just need to constantly be trying to maximize synergy and trying to leave yourself avenues to go down as many routes of synergy as possible.
All right, we are here for round two versus Giant Foam Hat. All right, we do have Lesser Masticore. Probably pitching Vesper Lark to it unless we draw a land here. All right, uh, let's keep. Goblin Champion, okay. That dies quite nicely to Lesser Masticore. All right, second Snow Covered Plains is good news. Let's say go. So it's gonna be tempting to pitch planes now, especially if we draw another land. Ooh, Orcish Hellraiser, so they are aggro. All right, so now we're gonna pitch a forest, I think. So let's go Lesser Masticore pitch forest. Actually, I think we pitch planes. We have double green? No. Well, we have the, scale, the overload on scale up is double green. Yeah, let's pitch, let's pitch planes. And that pretty much, I guess it doesn't pretty much crush them. So they're gonna have a good attack here with Orcish Hellraiser. We can't stop that. We're gonna get beaten down by this Orcish Hellraiser for a little bit, but presumably they don't have another play here unless they've got more Goblin, Goblin Champions. And I guess we shouldn't presume that at all because they look to be mono red and very aggressive mono red at that. Goblin Champion, I think, is an underrated card in this format. It gets in damage early, it's got good goblin synergies, and it really makes stuff... What is this? Why are you attacking me with a 1-2 when you could attack me with a 4-3? Um, so there's Lava Dart. Don't remember what other tricks there are. I don't think I particularly care about this. Why would they be doing this? I mean, if they Lava Dart, like regardless, Lesser Masticore is trading for a card here and then coming back, I think that's gotta be worth it for me, right? Sure. I think getting that thing off the battle, so we just two for one to our opponent there. And we have Lesser Masticore still. It seems very good for the home team. So I think we lead on Frostwalla here. And say go. And we'll take a hit from the Hellraiser, that's okay. I guess we didn't two for one. Those cantrips, right? Forgot about that. Cycling, choking tethers, tapping down frostwall. Sure. We take three here. This is fine. This blue red deck can deal damage in big chunks, so we need to be wary of that. Hopefully, rocks better and stabilizes us here. So since we're not blocking with Frostwalla, hopefully I think we attack with it here. This does leave us a little vulnerable to interaction from our opponent on our Rocks Veteran, but... All right, 
Hoxpetra not immediately dying is great news for us. Savage Swipe is a card. Okay. Um, this taps down a blocker, so we're, we're looking to potentially do a lot of damage here to the opponent. So I think... What do we want to kill? I think I want to kill the blade back sliver. I think that's the scariest card. Orcish Hellraiser. I guess if we kill Orcish Hellraiser, it doesn't give them a double block on Rocks Veteran or Frostwalla. So we should probably do that. So let's Savage Swipe the Orcish Hellraiser. We take two. No, oh, it does give them a double block on the frost wall. I still think we're fine to make that trade. Mm, no, it doesn't because we tap something down with rocks veteran. Never mind. I'm ridiculous. Um. So I think we smash with the frost wall on the rocks veteran and on the lesser masticore. Honestly, if it trades for a card at this point, I think we're great. So let's swing with the team. Tap down the blade back sliver. I would like to get this eye kite off the battlefield, I think. Because it's one of the ways you die in a hurry. And then we will pump Frostwallow and I think follow up with an Enduring Sliver. I think we're going to try to slow roll Vesperlark as long as we can reasonably for some Segovian Angel buyback. All right, they're just taking it on the chin, huh? All right, I like that, I think. Maybe we play the Vesperlark for defense here against the Ikite. I like that actually. It's also the most mana efficient play we can make. This is draw a card splice, right? Yeah. So this is the card that Sam Black built like this splice control deck around. Would like to be on the lookout for that. I do plan to draft a lot of Modern Horizons while it's out. I don't I didn't quite get deep enough into the format to really appreciate it, I don't think. We will block here. This blue red deck just tries to win from out of nowhere, and if we can keep our life total high and keep their creatures low, I think we're in good shape. Double strike, okay. Recruit the worthy is interesting. So I think we're just jamming with the team here again. Attack all, tap down the Spirehorn Minotaur. Does this get Trample also? No, just Double Strike, okay. So I think they're gonna have to chump Frostwall here. Yeah, that's bad news for them. And then I think we just hold up Recruit the Worthy with Buyback. So I guess I probably should have tapped down the blade back sliver actually if I'd thought that through a little more. And then we could have forced them to trade off the Spirehorn Minotaur, I, although I don't think it's going to end up mattering based on how this game has played out.
Firebolt my rocks veteran and they're gonna flash it back, okay. So it's not quite game. They are gonna have to chump with this Spinehorn Minotaur. It would have been game if I'd played Enduring Sliver. Smash. They have to jump block. And then I think we just hold up Recruit the Worthy again. They would have to top deck something pretty impressive to not be dead here. All right, sideboarding against blue red. Answered prayers is interesting because of the life gain. We could bring in both recruit the worthies. I don't think we really need to do that. I think I'm just gonna run it back. All right, game two, we got a mulligan here, unfortunately. I guess we could keep, we're on the draw. I still don't love it. I think our deck, uh, uh, it's close. With as aggressive as their deck was, I think I want a more reliable hand than this. I'm gonna mulligan. And if that land were a forest, I would be much more excited about keeping. All right, this is a much better hand here. I think we got a bottom conifer worm. Five cards, we keep six of these. We're gonna keep, I think we have to keep all three lands. Actually, I'm gonna bottom Segovian Angel. We don't need to curve out like this hand. We need, we need high card quality now that we're down a card. I think that's a better bottom. All right, beautiful. It's a great draw. Makes Conifer Worm and Frost Walla better. Sure. That's another great draw. So we know we're casting Conifer Worm on time. Feel really good right now about bottoming Segovian Angel. And we should hopefully be done drawing lands or not the deck wants to keep on giving all right so frostwalla i think we will trade this off here with Bladeback sliver if they offer the opportunity did they mulligan as well oh wow they went to five they had a firebolt okay so hopefully rocks veteran stabilizes us here i kite that's scary Lesser Mastercore is good. We're still going to play Rocks Veteran here. All right, so they are out of ammo. That means Bladeback Sliver is on as a pinger, though. We're under a fairly significant clock here. Conifer Worm. All right. Hopefully that will be enough to close out the game. So we're going to attack with Rocks Veteran here. Tap that down. Always yield. And let's slam a Conifer Worm. There you go. 
So we're tagging our opponent for seven and then a bunch. All right, them drawing blanks is good news for the home team. If they had not snap played their land there and attacked with Spinehorn Minotaur, I think I would have blocked, but it would be an interesting consideration for the opponent. Like, because that's such a bad trade for us. Actually, they probably should have attacked anyway, right? Because they're thrilled to trade Spinehorn Minotaur and Firebolt for Conifer Worm. They, I think they should have attacked all there. Hmm. I think I have to attack. And then the question is, do I do I play conifer worm post combat, or do I play? I guess I play conifer worm enduring sliver post combat. Yeah, we attack. All right, so. Swing both. Hope our opponent doesn't draw a way to draw two cards. Tap you down. Oh, we can't double spell. I knew there was a, okay. Still, so if my opponent draws a way to draw two cards, four, seven, we'll be at 10. Depending on how cheap it is, we might be dead. But they will be dead if they don't draw that. I think we do this. And we also have the option to block and still threaten lethal with just the conifer worm pump on the crackback. So I think this is fine. So they haven't just snap played anything here. So that doesn't bode well for us since they just snapped off their land last turn. So this is where it depends on how cheap it is. I, I, we still represent lethal with a conifer worm pump on the crackback, right? Four, so we'll get plus three, plus three, seven, we don't, right? So it'll be seven, it'll be eight, 10, we'll be one off. I still think we have to block here. And they also might just be going for the Firebolt play. Fist of Flame, sure. It's really bad for me, but at least we're not dead. Mm, that's really bad. All right, so I do think we lose here now because we don't have a snow permanent. So they don't necessarily know that though, although they're thrilled to block with Orcish Hellraiser. But we can tap it down and maybe get them to block with the play. I don't, there's no way out of this, I don't think, but we might as well make our opponent make some plays. So let's attack, attack. We're so close to double pumping too. Tap that down. Let's see if they want to block with the blade back sliver here. I think that's a prudent play from them. Okay. Let's 
So if we just had a way to not kill the Orca Shell Razor, we would be alive. It's a close game. So I go. Because there's always the chance they don't attack. I guess they just don't pay for Echo here and we die. <laughs> if we magically had some way to tap it. Okay, so that top deck Fists of Flame was pretty good for them. We were just a step too slow. That was a win on a mold of five from them. That's terrifying. We should be a lot better on the play, though. I think we just run it back here. Don't think we want to make changes. Would you like to play first? Yes, I would. I think this hand's a keep. It's a sketchy keep, but it's a keep. It's possible down the road if we draw some... I mean, they have mulliganed a lot. If we draw some lands that we might be able to eat an eye kite with the Segovian Angel by flashing in Force of Virtue. They're thinking. Hand the keep. Okay. Stinks that Ikite stops our Segovian Angel beatdowns if they have that. Yikes. It's not ideal for the home team. So two Snowlands is really good with Conifer Worm. Assuming we make it to that point in the game. Please no I kite. Firebolt is just really good in this format in general. Winds of Abandon, okay. That's a good one. Unfortunately, like, Orgish Hellraiser kind of prevents them from curving out in a way. I wonder if I'm just supposed to wins that there. It feels pretty bad. All right, no blocks. All right, that's a draw. So I honestly kind of think we pitch wins here. Is that crazy? It doesn't feel crazy to me just because of how the blue-red deck operates and they miss land drops. So let's go and hope just pray they don't have String of Disappearances because that crushes me. like don't even want to go for that here because we just have like a straight up block on this as well or like take another hit for three and then savage swipe them <laughs> yeah i think i'm gonna not play savage swipe here have some respect for the string we haven't seen it out of them yet, and we're in game three, but I just think it's a little too bad for me. And there's also a chance that like we get to attack with the Lesser Master Core next turn, and or they tap out here, and it's way more safe to use Savage Swipe. That's also a possibility. That's a bummer. Okay. No blocks. All right, so I 
think we just play Force of Virtue here and hold Lesser Master Core back to block the Hellraiser. The other option we have is to swing both and then we have Savage swipe up the next turn if we brick. I think I like that better here. So let's attack. See if our opponent continues to miss land drops or not. If we untap and get a savage swipe, I feel pretty, or conifer worm for that matter, I feel pretty good about where we're at. It's possible we're just supposed to block with Segovian Angel here to keep our life total high. Yeah, that is getting savagely swiped. Interesting. Okay, so we savage swipe now. Boom, boom. Scale up is cute. So if our opponent attacks us and doesn't have a blocker, we have lethal next turn with scale up. I think that makes it worth it to swing both here. I think it's probably likely that they're gonna have a blocker. But not guaranteed. Blue Red runs a lot of spells. I think we take this. Okay. That's terrifying. Okay, what do I do? So we could scale up Lesser Masticore and use it as a pseudo removal spell, forcing them to block with a Spinehorn Minotaur. That Spinehorn Minotaur is so scary if they have a single Fist of Flame. I think that's probably what we have to do, unfortunately. And then we block this Orcish Hellraiser with Enduring Sliver on the way back. Hmm. There's one point off. Because the scale up is a 7-5. Yeah, I think we got to do that. So let's scale up here. All right, let's let go. We're at a functional six right now because of Firebolt, and actually a functional four after we block this Orcish Hellraiser. It's been a tight game. I feel good about our decision to pitch, with, pitch Winds of Abandon. Regardless of what happens here, these have been great games despite our opponent playing on moles to not many cards. Makes it so something can't block this turn. 
Okay. That's scary. So I think we have to block here because Fists of Flame is lethal. Gives plus X plus O if they attack, I guess. So is Fists lethal here? Hang on. Let me do some Googling real quick. I want to read Fists of Flame. Draw a card until end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus one plus oh for each card you draw on this turn. So they would do, it's not, right? So what is their plan then? Six, this, I don't think there's a combination of cards that kills me here. So if they play this and then play another one, that would be pretty bad for me. But I think we take this. They have to have another creature to play. If it's another Hellraiser, we are in trouble. That is good news, because we have a blocker now that is not... Oh, no, it does trade with it. Okay, so let's smash. Did we get there? String? What do you got? Sinkhole. Okay. Now we're dead to Fists of Flame? Yikes. That's scary. Okay. There we go. Please no Fists of Flame one time. Feels bad that we're like getting owned by our own Force of Virtue here. Yep, that's game. If this didn't have plus one, plus one, we could block and go to one. Whoa, flying trample, poggers. Good games. Tight games. All right, on to the third round. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can scrape out the two one. We keep here. I think we just slam recruit turn one. That's a little spewy. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, it's F8's not working. I kept hitting F8. It's not working because I have Force of Virtue in hand. Scale up. Does that change what I want to do at all? I guess we hold on to this recruit the worthy. The one one's likely to get blanked so soon. Could be an easy scale up win. Good fortune unicorn. Okay. It's a good card. We're gonna lead on Vesper Lark here. So that we can flashback battle screech. The green white mirror, huh? 
There's cool things you can do with infinite persist loops with Good Fortune Unicorn in the format. Bant, huh? With a fairy suit, it's going to be a one mana 2 2 flyer. It's a little bit of a yikes. All right, looks like we might be curving into scale up. Battle Screech, let's go. Another Fairy Seer. I wonder if they're blue-white splashing the unicorn? This is an interesting combination of cards here from the opponent. They went top top. Okay. Play an angel and a frost walla. And then next turn, get him a scale up. Assuming we get a land off the top, that is. I think we just go ahead and play Recruit here. Easy game. Who needs Force of Virtue? All right, good fortune unicorn, double fairy seer. Again, like we just don't have sideboard. I think we have like our deck is pretty combo-y in the sense that like we're trying to do our thing and we don't like, we already have the three savage swipes main deck. We don't have a lot of other ways to interact out of the board. So I think we just keep presenting the best version of ourselves as it were. All right, game two, round three. We've got a good good draw here. Let's keep. Fairy Seer. Now natural this time, not quite as scary. Top top. So we will trade off here, I think so that we get some Vesper Lark value, if they want to do that. Rhyme Tender, sure. So you go. Natural band, nice. Ooh, okay, they have fixing, that's good. See what they do with the fairy sea scryer here. One top, one bottom. We're gonna run out of Vesper Lark. And hope that we're drawing a forest sometime in the near future. 
We will trade this off with Fairy Seer here. That's scary. Well, I guess we're actually going to trade it off with the Rhyme Tender. Scale up, huh? All right. Let's say go here. Start recruiting some worthy people. This one might be able to nab Fountain of Vicar here. I mean, Bellowing Elk. Yikes. Triple Fairy Seer. Okay. Two top, okay. No blocks for me. It says trample, so there's no point in chumping with the recruit token. Start amassing an army here for scale up. That's a good draw. I think we just hold the Segovian Angel back. We don't want to trade our creatures off with scale up in hand. Forest also lets us start savagely swiping things. That card is great. It's so good in the ninja's deck too. Because you gotta keep picking it up and re-triggering the, the hideaway. All right, Bellowing Elk is not being kind here. So hopefully we draw a forest and can kill this bellowing elk. Or we draw frost wallow, that's cool too. So let's say go. Presumably our opponent will run out of creatures eventually. Okay. They didn't want to pay blue blue to bounce one of my creatures. I guess they wanted to replay it to trigger the bellowing elk. That makes sense. Good to know that they have string for savage swipe purposes in game three, because it looks like that's where we're heading. Wow, attacking with the Watcher. Interesting. So they must just want the card that's behind it. I think we give it to him. We can't afford to take two at this point in the game. Okay. Okay. I think we attack with Segovian Angel here. Maybe we just wait and try to really get him. So no attacks. This makes it so our rocks better and can just block their bellowing elk. This could be a savage blowout. What is this? No, I guess if we top deck a forest, we just kill that. It's not the worst. Oh, we're going to get him. Block, eat. Forest, please. 
Okay. Still not dead. I think we attack with the angel and the two soldiers here. And if they want to activate Fountain of Icar, we can eat it and chomp with the recruit token here. So the opponent's got to be careful too, because we can just crack back at them with Rocks Veteran pretty hard. Kind of absurd that we're in this game with only having white mana and five green cards stranded in hand. Stop. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Squirrel Nest? Okay. It's bad news for us because Bellowing Elk has permanent indestructible. But it is beatable. Alright, so if I recruit here and swing out, we are not killing them. So I think we just hold the recruit in hand. Deck, please! Alright, so let's attack with Segovian Angels. They go. Sure. Okay, not dead. They're gonna be dead to just like a random scale up here pretty soon if we can live a little longer. We're also getting close to dead to them going wide around us. Boom. All right, there we go. So, I think we savagely swipe that good fortune unicorn down. And then next turn our opponent is dead to scale up on the angel if they don't block. And that lets us also recruit the worthy. What happens if we savage swipe it down, swing out? Still nothing good. Okay. So I'm making a 2 2 squirrel in response. That's a good tight play on their part. And we say go after attacking. Okay. The chump is interesting there. I'm feeling pretty good about our spot if they're chumping. Recruit the Worthy has done serious work this game. What is this? Okay, I don't think that matters at this point.
Force of Virtue, I guess, has done serious work as well. That's a busted card. Okay. So... I think we just play a Conifer Worm. Or we could play Savage Swipe Killing the Elephant and set up for the scale up win the next turn. That's probably the right play. Do I just win here? They have four blockers. No, still no. Keep trying to make it lethal. It still doesn't quite add up. Actually, is it? Because I tapped down a blocker. Tap down the 4-2. They have three blocks. It is, isn't it? They'd have to have a string of disappearances to not be dead. So they go to seven. Block, block, block. Take six and die. All right, I'm into it. Let's go for it. We have re Recruit as making two blockers as backup if this goes south. Yeah, wins is so good, I agree. Tap down you. Looks like we got him, maybe? All right, Exaxes. Did not think we were winning that game. All right, that feels like a good, good way to wrap up the league. We had close games against Giant Foam Hat. Congrats to them, and hopefully they did well on their 3-0 match. So, hope you enjoyed that dive into Modern Horizons. The format is very deep. I think you can probably expect more Modern Horizons draft videos from Ethan and I. I guess I can't speak for Ethan, but I will I will be doing some more Modern Horizons drafting on stream, uh, twitch.tv slash Metronome. You can check me out there. And again, if you enjoy this content, please remember to like, subscribe, leave us a comment. If you think there's a way I could have squeezed out some more damage against Giant Foam Hat and won one of those games, please let me know the lines you saw. Um, so thanks again for watching, and enjoy your evening, YouTube.